Tom Gorman, Head of Operations in Digital Realty Interaction. Thank you so much for inviting me to your favorite bar, Grogan's in South William Street. Absolutely, the, what, um, what a bar, what a bar. In the heart of Dublin is what I'd often hear around Grafton Street and stuff. So yeah. why is what looks like a really good bar, a great <laughs> bar for you? It's it's not just a great bar. It's 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 one of the best bars in the world, in my my opinion, for where it is. It's right in the heart of Dublin, and it, it really is one of the hearts of Dublin. Um, it's a conduit for people from all ages, all walks of life. As you talk to people in Grogan's, you'll find people from film directors to you know guys kind of sweeping the streets and and and, and everything in between. It's not just a hub for people to come and have a drink. It's a place for people to come and people watch. It's right in the middle of South William Street. The As I always say about South William Street, South William Street is the Dubliners Temple Bar. It's <laughs> Dublin people don't go to the Temple Bar. Great they come to point. South William Street. And inside, you'll see the background behind you, inside uh, it's a really dynamic environment in, in the pub. It's a registered art gallery. A lot of people don't know that. It promotes a lot of local artwork, a lot of local artists. You'll find um, you know, a huge variety of artwork which is all for sale, by the way. Um, and it's constantly changing and evolving. And it's a real interesting conversation piece when people arrive in the pub and sit down and look around. And it's just a magical place where yeah. people's people's lives cross for that couple of hours where they sit together. And, and uh, you could end up talking, if you're of that mind, you can yeah. sit and enjoy the scenery and talk to nobody. Or you can you can end up talking to some really, really interesting people. But isn't, isn't that what the whole objective of a, a, a local public house was, was a place that you could go and meet other types of people. Um, I'm, just look, I'm just looking at it, right? And I'm sure that there are millions of dollars and millions of yen being spent to boutique pubs all over the world. And this thing was chic. It looks like it was chic before that was even a word. And yeah. Look, look at that. I, I actually think that that's amazing. They're the old squidgy chairs now i'm most impressed because most of the places i've been or i frequent have they're all ripped they're not as nice as that but they're very comfortable and they allow you to lean i always yeah. love that about those chairs and, and and they're washable which is fantastic um, <laughs> <laughs> for those spilled pints uh you know it, grogan's the environment inside grogan's for people that have been going there for, for a lot of years you, you'll notice hasn't changed a lot um, yeah. There's a fantastic piece of stained glass on the wall at the end of the bar, which is a, an old stained glass panel that uh, is actually an image of the inside of the bar. So next time you're in Grogan's, have a look at it. And it was done. I'm not sure when it was done, but but it's been there. I've been going to Grogan's for, well, for a long time. It's been there for, for a very, very long time. And the image of the bar hasn't changed. It's captured in that stained glass panel and uh, right down to the ceiling tiles above you and the, uh, the floral carpet below you. So it's a, oh, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a great environment. It's amazing as well. And probably if we were sitting there and we had a chat with the barman, he'd tell us who used to frequent there. Um, mm. I was recently talking to someone who used to frequent Slattery's and it was all about Brendan Behan. And it was mm. all about sort of some of the old Dubliners. And, and you know, those stories and the reggae, you sort of feel, oh, I'm in a place that those guys were. Or Phil Linnett probably was there. And, yeah. you, you know, yeah. you get that whole whole sort of sense of, oh, this is a place. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's it's fantastically located. It's right at the back door to Powers Court. Uh, cut through the lane, Castle Lane, into Georgia Street Arcade, out onto Dame Street. It's it's a natural transit point for a lot of that. Exactly. A lot of things that go on in the centre of Dublin and the real heart. So if things don't go so well for you with digital, well, I'm sure they will. You can have a job at Board Fulcher. You can be that guy going around the 10 boutique pubs because you certainly do a great job of it. So, well, uh, Yeah, I might get a job as Pub Spy in the Sunday World or something. Pub like Spy. Pub Spy in Sunday go. World, if it was being printed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> listen, we're not saying we're old. But we're, just, we're not yeah. saying we're old. <laughs> so listen, so we're sitting there. And I go up to Amicia and I say, tell us something. Just one thing that most people probably don't know about you. You know, the, the one one thing that probably people don't know about me, although that anybody that's close to me will, will know, is that I, I love singing. Um, and I've always sang. And I used to sing in bands, uh, a lot of bands, when I, was, when I was younger. Still play with some of the old musicians that I played with way back in school and even college days. And, uh, you know, we still get together and record some music from time to time. But... My 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 go to uh, de-stress 
um, uh, place is, you know, immerse myself in in music and song and my Spotify playlists. And I've always got tunes going on in my head. Sometimes if I'm uh, not paying attention in a, in a meeting where I should be, it's probably because I'm singing a Bruce Springsteen track or something like that to get me through the meeting. And have um, you got a favorite genre or are you generally whatever? I, I would say... 70s rock probably even some a lot of 80s as well i mean i've i've a lot of rock, rock from the 70s uh, and 80s you know those classic police bruce springsteen pink floyd led yeah. zeppelin kind of bands you know but then i throughout the 80s i found pop music um everything from i suppose craft work goes back a bit further but you know depeche mode and uh pet shop boys and you know span the ballet all of those kind of bands as well um so um, i really have a I try, I try to have as much as possible a, a, an eclectic mix. I can see you, like myself in the 80s, mm. with a big quiff going on Oh, somewhere. yeah. I, just... I, ha I had a full-on flock of seagulls, for, <laughs> for people that remember that band, at one stage. Probably, oh, probably, yeah. too, probably too much brill cream. Uh, this is the reason myself and yourself are sitting here like this. Well, I do this by choice, to be honest. Sure, you me know. too. It's manageable. It's manageable. I've uh, saved my... it for it. Yeah, my, my, as my wife always says to me, says, you know, you're, you're lucky. I said, yeah, this is wash and go. This, um, you know. this is very true. And you don't have any big overheads. We're very lean. You know, all this yeah. talk about lean. Well, speaking of cost saving, the interesting point, the last, the last time I ever set foot in the barbers was the day of my 24th birthday. The first day I uh, shaved my head. And I haven't been, I haven't set foot in the barber since. So I'm thinking all of that money I've saved over those years. Well, I think most people watching would agree that at least you have a handsome face. Look at me, right? I decided to shave this when I was about 26, and it was 1994, 95 maybe. And this wasn't popular, this particular mm. look. Mm. So let's just say I used to get in no problem to nightclubs. I used there to get in no advantage. problem. Yeah. I used to be asked, sort of, could other people get in because they thought I was the security, usually. But, yeah, no, it has its benefits. It so does. you have a vast array of experience on getting a sense. You played a bit of sport. You played that mad, wonderful, exhilarating sport called hurling. I did, yeah. indeed, yeah. Ah, yeah. has yeah. to be, man. has to be one of the greatest unknown brilliant sports in the planet. I, I, I think it's a shame that hurling isn't better known outside of Ireland. Mm. Um, I, I still think it's, is it not one of the, one of, if not the fastest ball sport in the world? Field sports, yeah. Field sport, yeah. It's an yeah. amazing sport for, for those of, for, for people who haven't seen it. Um, there's, a, there's a very famous incident that happened when John Wayne came to visit Ireland. I'm, I don't know if you're aware. And he was taken to, by the then Taoiseach, um, he was taken to an All-Ireland hurling filing game. And he was asked during the hurling match, which is, I think it's 15 on 15, and lads with big sticks running around trying to hit a small leather ball in a pair of tiny shorts. Um, he was asked by the T-shirt, you know, would he like to be down there with a hurl in his hand in the thick of things and in the fight? And his, his response was, well, I sure as hell wouldn't like to be down there without one. Which, <laughs> which I love. That's a brilliant quote. I love oh, that. that's brilliant. And, 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 and you know, even when I watch it now, I, I have never hit a ball in anger. I, I think what it epitomizes, which is lacking in some other more professional, actual professional sports, the honesty. Yeah. <laughs> the dudes, yeah. the dudes, if they wanted, could be rolling around. They could get fellas oh, sent yeah. off. But they just seem to want to play on the line, mm. but on the line, not over it. Yeah. I, I, I love it. So... Let, let I, think me ask. I, I think I think the one thing that keeps it real is because it's still an amateur sport. Yeah. So the guys that play it, they want to play it. They they want to be out there and they just want to win. That's all they want. They do. You know, they, they just do, want to yeah. win. They want to compete and they want to win. And yeah. that's you know, and, and it hasn't I think been it, ruined by the big money. Yeah, and some would say on the, well, maybe not in the hurling, but certainly on the football, you need some new winners, and we got one of those this year, I guess. Don't yeah. tell Seamus Dunn if he's listening in. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna put all this experience together, right? You've taken all these shaving your head, playing hurling, playing in bands, getting rotten fruit thrown at you in cages, I'm sure, on occasion. You're writing a self-help book. Mm. What's gonna be in this book? If you were going to write, write one yourself, you know, I think if I was to if I was to title the book, it would be 
sometimes the best decisions you ever make are the selfish ones. And okay, yeah. There's the, the and and there's a reason for that. You know, if I look back and at some of the go all the way back to when you're uh, you know when you were a young lad with a, with a girlfriend, um, and sometimes you know you you, you might have realized you're with the wrong person, and hmm. um, so it's a hard thing to do when you're a 14, 15 year old lad to walk away. Yes. Um, and sometimes the best decision you make is the selfish one, and you end up with the love of your life. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, the same has been true throughout my career. You know, I made a couple of tough decisions early on in my career where I, I was, you know, I, I was mad enough, I think, like yourself, to go out and start up my own business um, and operate in, the, in, a, in the crazy world out there in the Irish economy. Yeah. Um, and I left a very, very good job at the time because you know the job wasn't for me it wasn't going anywhere i didn't see career progression and mm. and i made a decision which you know probably didn't go down well or was was uh, balked at at the time i made a selfish decision to leave mm. and take a risk and take a gamble mm. and it turned out in in hindsight it was the best decision I ever made um, yeah. and that's why i think too many people stay in places and stay in jobs stay in relationships that you know that they shouldn't because of other people and Sometimes the best decisions you make in your life are the selfish ones for everybody, not just yourself. Yeah. And, and, and you've hit the nail on the head is, is that uh, when you move on a few years on the clock, you start to measure success, usually about peace of mind. <laughs> you know, do I yeah. actually like myself? Do I like what I'm doing? Do I like the people I'm around? Because... You know, it's funny, isn't it? You go through this, I don't know, maybe I'm nostalgic, but you go through this filter at one stage if you're lucky enough to be, be, be able to, you know, support your family and, and mm. go on a few holidays and maybe yeah, sort of like mortgage. You know, you're able to do that. Yeah. But then you say, right, okay, well, well what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And to your point there, if you have made those decisions throughout, you probably arrive at a place you're more than likely closer to actually being happy, maybe. I think you're, I think you're a happier person. And I think you have yeah. less regrets. You're yeah. a happier person. And I think the biggest impact is on people around you. Okay. you know, yeah. I hear you. you. You have a bigger impact on people around you when you're happy. And I think that's important. You know, it is. It, 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 too many people, I think, go through life and look back and say, I should have done this then, I should have done that. You know, yeah. then I should have had the benefit of hindsight, but make the decision. Don't be afraid to make the selfish decision. Uh, and I think you probably would, would agree. Make it. It's never too late. Never too late. Make, make, never too make late. It, but, but make it. So listen, I'm sure you made a lot of people very unhappy singing Flock of Seagulls. Absolutely. And uh, Depeche Mode and all those things. So it really doesn't surprise me at all. But I've thoroughly enjoyed our chat i know tom as a person way more than i knew tom beforehand and um, i can certainly say that i'd call you at a friday night at eight o'clock and say how you fixed and i think that's a lot of what uh, people are looking for when they're looking for partners in business and whatever right and, and we can definitely make that selfish decision and stay for an extra point yeah, Tom made me stay. I missed the last bus. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Gorman, thank you so much for your time. Stay safe. Pleasure, Gary. Great to talk. Thanks a million.